India has over 820 million active internet users and data consumption has shot up. Even the data generated by companies has surged with the rise of artificial intelligence, internet of things, machine learning and so on. Data localization has become more important than ever. According to reports, India has the 14th highest number of data centers and houses 151 of them. But they are not enough. All of this has suddenly aggravated the demand for data centers in the country. The market is witnessing fast growth and investments are pouring in. One such company is Mumbai-based Yota Data Services, which is rapidly expanding its footprint. Backed by Hira Nandani Group, the five-year-old startup was recently in the limelight after it became the first Indian company to acquire AI chips from Nvidia. Forbes India got a chance to take a tour of Yota's data center park in Navi Mumbai, which currently has 7,200 server racks powered by almost 60 megawatts of power. In this video, co-founder Sunil Gupta, who is also known as the data center man of India, takes us through the use cases of these AI chips, the current data center boom, the importance of data localization, and much more. These chips being allocated on a priority basis are for India. Uh, the background is uh, uh, Jensen Huang, who is the co-founder and CEO of uh, Nvidia. He came to India in August, and he met the Prime Minister. And uh, Prime Minister asked him that why uh, Indian data, you know, which obviously India is the largest producer of data, simply because of our demographics, is going out. It's actually training the models of people outside, and the same models are then coming to India. And India is acting as a market for those models. So why India cannot create its own models for its own problem for its own problems for solving the problems at the ground level for its own citizens? So how do we take a leapfrog into the AI market? One is for India as a market for solving India's issues, and also just like India is a, I would say, world's largest software and services market. Eleven percent of the world's software and services market is from India. We know that for last three decades we are leader in that. Why we cannot be a leader? Why we cannot become an AI garage for the world also? So for India, it is not only to be a leader of AI in India for India, but also we can be a leader of AI for the rest of the world. Right. So what can we do? And Jensen say ultimately I am a producer of chips. I can give you chips. I can do priority allocations. India is close to the heart. It's a big market with China becoming practically out of bounds. Possibly India is the potentially the second largest market. Uh, but somebody from India has to come forward, who has to invest into these chips. I will be giving them priority allocations. I'll give them my engineering resources, all the help they want. Right. But somebody has to come forward, Correct. and that is where Yota chipped in. We came forward and we said, "Okay, we will do it." And Nvidia just put their entire weight behind us. So today we are what they call the Nvidia cloud provider (NCP). We are a elite partner. Nvidia is giving very very high priority allocations to us, and that's how. While I placed the order for sixteen thousand H hundred chips, uh, they made a priority allocation of first four thousand. This is something which you know has started coming in. We have almost received all the chips, and today we are in the process of as soon as possible, you know, uh, commissioning all these chips for putting them to use by our customers. Sixteen thousand. H hundreds connecting them through the InfiniBand network. This will become possibly ninth or tenth largest supercomputer in the world. So you can just imagine what type of capacity we are talking about. It's not small. It's huge, right? On a world scale, uh, a GPT four was trained on twelve thousand A hundreds, right? H hundred is four times more powerful than A hundred. Yeah. So essentially. A GPT-4, which is the largest LLM till date in the world, was trained on 3,000 equivalent of H-100s. I have ordered for 16,000. So, if there is a customer, or there are like five customers, each one of them who want to make a GPT-4, I can simultaneously handle their load. If I have to give you an analogy of that, and and you won't believe when uh, this entire thing started, and my name was proposed to Jensen that Yota seems to be the right candidate in India. And that time, I was told that with 700 chips, I happened to be the largest uh, Nvidia chip owner in the country, which was good to hear and also bad to hear because for India as a country, 700 chips is nothing. And possibly that also explains why this plunge of 16,000 most powerful chips 
because India as a country possibly need 10 times more than that. Yeah. And that is the journey I'm trying to take. So it is approximately $1 billion for 16,000 chips is something which uh, will end up spending over a period of three years. So essentially it is like a bigger part of this $1 billion comes obviously in the capex acquisition of these chips and it's not only chips alone, there's a whole paraphernalia of that InfiniBand network, there's a very specialized storage equipment we need to buy, there's very specialized cabling, there's so much of re-engineering I had to end up doing in my data center just to bring these chips in. And then the amount of power they will consume, that itself will be humongous. So if you add the three-year power cost, running cost, plus the capex cost put together, it will be almost $1 billion for 16,000 chips. Before the arrival of GPUs, or rather I would say before the arrival of chat GPT, about one year back in our lives, when suddenly AI got into the consumer's hand, yeah. right? Even when GPUs were there, they were for not generative AI, they were for the regular AI use cases and they were not so much into adoption. Mm -hmm. So even if they were, people were not aware about that, right? Uh, majority of the use cases in data center across the world till that time, before this AI wave came in, were CPU workloads, mm -hmm. right? Enterprise workload, SAP, Oracle, uh, emailing, uh, websites, you know, all those use cases. Yeah. And that continues to be the case in my data center as well. You know, from 2019 mm -hmm. till about now, before all these GPUs now start coming in, it was all CPUs. Now within CPUs, you can have variety of CPUs, the, you know, low power to the highest power CPUs, multi-core CPUs from Intel and AMDs of the world who were the champions of CPU era always. So that continues to dominate, you know, uh, majority of the space and power in my data center till now. And the use case is there because they are hosting IT and IT is consumed by every single vertical across industries. So today in my data center, in the same data center we are sitting right now, you will see banking customers, you will see financial services customers, you will see brokers, you will see pharma companies, manufacturing companies, auto, the new gen internet facing companies, e-commerce companies. Uh, you will see cloud service providers who may be running their own cloud services but are consuming my underlying data center services. Yeah. So you'll find every type of customers who are consuming their services and because I'm not just into a so-called co-location services which is just giving the power space and pooling, which is also one of the services for some customers if they want to consume that. But majority of our customers are enterprises, customers, startups and SME customers who want to consume the entire value chain. They want to take uh, power and space and cooling, they want to take hardware, they want to take software, they want to take virtualization, they want me to manage their cyber security services, they want me to manage their application. So all those things to all those customers practically I'm doing till date. Uh, even when I was running GPUs, as I, I explained earlier, the GPUs till, till, till now were more for non-AI use cases, yeah. right? Uh, as I said, content generation, online gaming yeah. and all this thing, right? Now this wave of GPUs, the big ticket GPUs, are specifically for the purpose of the AI use cases, generative AI use cases, the training these big models and then putting these models for inferencing. So that is, I would say the big fundamental shift happening even in the data center industry and that is why uh, first is these chips cannot be put into a regular office premises. The amount of power and cooling and other paraphernalia which is required is simply not possible. You can put them into your office. Even for a well-built data centers which were built for CPU era, there will be a whole lot of customization and retrofitting yeah. and a lot of engineering effort will be required before you can actually uh, put up these chips into a data center. So, so going forward you will see increasingly and I can see that worldwide happening that uh, you will have very AI specific data centers getting built, you know, customized to the needs of these GPUs. Again, uh, this debate has happened multiple times and it keeps on happening and it depends on it which value chain of the data center services a regulation may be required, soft regulation or a hard regulation. Like for example, so one is that if I talk from an infrastructure point of view, one thing which is regulated is internet because if I am running a data center, I need to connect my data center to public internet. Only then the sites hosted in my data center will be accessible to the end user. So yeah. I am an internet service provider also. I have a license for that. 
there are enterprises who will connect all their branches to my data center so that let's say a banking application running in my data center is connected to their branches and atms for example right yeah. so i also need to have a point to point network connectivity services also which i do again there is a license required i have some global customers who are running their applications in india but accessing those applications let's say from singapore okay. i have those customers also they wanted that from india to singapore for example there has to be direct private connectivity so i ended up taking a license for that also so these are the licenses you require for providing connectivity services for pure data center there is no regulation or a license required in india first is i am residing in their campus for last 27 years so <laughs> the hilnan is a top management and also part of my social circle that is one part second is uh, uh, in my previous uh, assignment before i started yota i was uh, leading entity business in india and uh, when i was looking to grow up business there and looking to create a large campus in mumbai hiran uh, nani came forward and say i have a piece of land in an area called chandivali and why don't you uh, you know why don't you just uh, look at us and that's how i ended up uh, contacting with them you know to build my campus core and shell and you know everything which is grounds up and that is where which is their forte so i did business with them and somewhere in 2019 early uh, you know possibly they also had this in mind that this seems to be a great business right instead of doing residential and commercial buildings possibly data center buildings make much more sense more investments yeah. but maybe more returns and this is the in thing and uh, for me it was like at that time that the way this business is growing and i saw hyperscalers coming in continuously consuming one building after the other and wanting to have more and more buildings in the same campus to scale their operations i could see that in india we'll have to have a wave of data center campuses and not just individual dental buildings so you'll have to take a large infrastructure approach create a big campus take your own power license put your own substations put your fiber own fiber ducts and then give unlimited scalability to your customers so that is the approach i wanted to do at that time and i thought that whoever funds me should not just bring money they should be able to bring this underlying capability and that is where because of my already having worked with them so much of bond homing of uh, you know working together was there so i approached mr hirandani and uh, i think uh, this was a surprise thing that within 3 weeks we actually had uh, thought of uh, and decided on starting yota uh this industry also is like has gone through multiple phases from late 90s till 2014 15 the whole of country had got 200 megawatt equivalent of data center you know normally we take the capacity in megawatts from 2015 when this wave started to now india has already crossed 1 gigawatt which means in the last 10 years five times capacity has got created and if we see the projections of the announced plans or the things which are actually getting built on the ground this possibly will become about 3 gigawatt by 2030 so country has taken a huge leap frog in creating this infrastructure and uh, yes there will always be uh, some scenarios where the demand was high but the supply is not exactly available at that time and suddenly a lot of supply comes in the market uh, which was higher than what the demand was so those i would say steps will be coming in but uh, i can say more or less today india is able to meet up its demand ai is bringing a big strain nobody was building for ai right everybody was building to meet the demands of hyperscale cloud operators ai suddenly has come as a new wave and people are saying this is global um, again uh, sort of a uh, you know sort of a trends yeah. that the capacity of data centers required for serving ai need will be as big as the whole capacity for cloud which has been created till date so essentially the market may become double overnight simply because the ai workloads also started coming in so how the market responds to that we'll all see but yes that's where we are